while you were in prison, you didn't only uh, convert to Islam, which, you know, helped structure it and change your life for the better. You also found fitness and training and whatnot. Y'all know that. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all know that, man. Y'all know that. This is what I do, man. <laughs> so, so, like, what even, when you went in, what attracted you towards that world? Because when you went in, you were bony as hell. Yeah. <laughs> what attracted you towards that world when you were in? I had to get in shape. You had to get in shape because, like I said, it was a lot of violence going around. And I'm not saying, like, the biggest guy can't get folded up. Mm -hmm. But what I am saying is that the odds of that happening yeah. are very slim if you know what you're doing. Yeah. So getting in shape, protecting myself were two things that were mandatory that I, I, ha I knew I had to do for myself. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And on top of that, once I developed the love for it, I knew I wanted to make a business out of it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's when I came home, I knew it was going to be lucrative because I would always read like magazines, right? Yeah. Uh, Men's Health magazines and stuff like that when I was in. And I'm like, man, I can make some money out of this when mm -hmm. I come home. But I need to make sure that I'm in the best shape possible because I want to do as less competing as possible, meaning with other competitors. Yeah. Put it like this, the amount of work that I put in yeah. and the way I look, my physicality, my skill set, Trying to obtain that out here, mm -hmm. it would take the average man probably, probably twenty years. Mm -hmm. What to do, everybody? And thanks for tuning in to the Day by Day podcast for your Day by Day broadcast. I'm your host, Day with an I, not a Y. Do not X Y. And today, ladies and gentlemen, I have such a treat for y'all, and honestly, a treat for myself because <laughs> this is a full circle moment. Because right now, I'm joined by a very good friend and someone who's an inspiration to thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people out there, including myself. I'm with my good friend, and AKA Wiley, owner of Man Time Fitness. What to do, my bro? What's going on, bro? Hey, look, I tell people all the time, like, this is when the, I look at him as the OG podcaster <laughs> at, at, at this point, man. Like, anybody else, y'all gonna, gonna have to pay the fee. But this guy right here, he, he's somebody special to me. So, you know, anytime he reaches out to me, Look, bro, we might be in town, or I'm about to be on his side down there in Charlotte. We got to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, we absolutely did that last time you was in Charlotte. We had that workout on the roof at mm -hmm. the Y. I ain't going to lie, that joint kicked my ass. <laughs> I was dehydrated that day. I know you remember that. I'm like, yeah. yo, I'm like, bro. It was hot. Yeah, it, it was, was hot. Humid. Hey, I'm like, bro, I'm going to finish it. Just give me, like, a two-minute breather in between sets. You're like, come on, come on, let's get it. Yeah. But um, ultimately, I appreciate that with working yeah. out and whatnot. And then I appreciate, you know what I'm saying, the flowers you just gave. Mm -hmm. um, we did an episode, damn, what was that, 2020, right? Early 2020? Yeah. So Asada, my, my, first, my firstborn was a couple months old. That was October or November of 2020. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah bro. And that was, like, my fourth episode, maybe. Shout out to CJ. That was at us, CJ's house. Yeah. Or his, uh, at his yeah, studio. Like studio. Shout out to CJ for letting us use his studio. And then just the growth from then to now for both of us. You it's know what I'm crazy. saying? Yeah, like that's why I had to spin the bend, spin the block with this and do it again with you because, you know, like a lot of people, it's easy to be stagnant. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's very yeah. easy to be stagnant. Facts. And me and you both are the epitome of, I'm talking about going back to teenage years, mm -hmm. of not staying stagnant, always leveling up. And I actually want to start there, actually. Uh, first, let me take a shot of this magic mind. I'm going to see what this don't talk yeah, about, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, Check it out. Who's actually a sponsor of this show. Shout out to Magic Mind. This is a productivity shot, uh, you know, created for focus, energy, and less stress, all natural, organic ingredients. Okay. And it's green. My man said, oh shit, it's green. As soon as he saw this, I was green. I was like, is that I was like, is that bad or good? Yo, anything that's green in the wintertime is good. Mm -hmm. Nine times out of ten. I mean, yeah. normally it's an indication of iron. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure it's somewhere hidden in the ingredients, but yeah. looks pretty good though. Yeah, Tastes yeah. Good. Yeah. I um so I when they first sent me my sample packages, I took them. I was sick for a little bit, so I would, you know, take them, but I wasn't really doing work. I was just kind of resting, but oh, being right. able to actually use it now. Um so again, shout out to Magic Mind for that. So like I said, I want to start here. <clears throat> Let's start from square one. <laughs> Me and you, I, bro, we've known each other since middle school. It's like 15 years in, bro. Bro, like that's insane. Since middle school, 15, we, we, 16. we both were knuckleheads. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Both got in trouble, whether it was with school. I think I was worse. 
Yo, you were definitely worse. You were definitely worse. I, I was ready to get to that. I was ready to say whether it was with school or the law. I mean, I kind of a little yeah. bit, but you, because the thing is, like, when we were both, we was knuckleheads, but when it came to the streets, like, I had like a toe in the streets, maybe. <laughs> maybe a, a toe big nail. toe. A toenail. A toenail. <laughs> but I mean, you had two feet running yeah. through the mud. You know what I'm saying? Like, you yeah. had two feet in there. So I want to start that first and foremost. Let's just talk about at your, you know, Lois, if you would, as far as, you know, state of mind, where were you, you know, before you even got to the state of mind you had now, before you went through your true journey, where were you? Drug abuse. Mm. The drug abuse really kicked my ass. Mm. So we talking, obviously not hardcore drugs, but from, from my principles and where I stand at now, yeah. I consider marijuana a drug. Yeah. A hundred percent. So that, with the liquor, I was... We were drinking lean back when lean was, uh, they still had activists and qualitists. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm I, I actually remember. I don't know if you remember this, bro. I, I've tried lean one time my whole life. We was at the court. It was at the court. I was <laughs> at the court. I remember. I remember. I remember, bro. And you know what? The reason why that was my first and last time drinking lean, because I'm like, nah, take this shit away from me. It tastes too good. <laughs> this shit tastes way too good. Get this shit away from me. No, because I'm not. Yeah. Nah, nah, nah. And we're not saying that to like endorse it or nah, anything. Nah, stay nah, nah, stay nah. a hell away from that stuff. So Seriously. like when I was taking it, when I was drinking, smoking, the partying, running the streets, like it was, dude. I really was out my out my mind, bro. Like yeah. I didn't really have a the best decision making. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And the poor decision making that I would make when I was intoxicated, it led to me just getting locked up, bro. I just yeah. kept getting locked up. I would keep paying bonds, mm -hmm. keep coming out, and going back in. You know what I'm saying? It was like a repeated cycle. Mm -hmm. And then I got to the point where, all right, we're not letting this nigga back out. This, this, yeah. this, this nigga, now he's getting caught with firearms. Yeah, we're going to sit his ass down. So Yeah, and I, I want to ask you about that. But first, how you said, like, just your judgment and state of mind. Um, <clears throat> I, I know what that's like from two perspectives. One, from me doing it. Mm -hmm. And two, from family members um, mm. and close friends. And, you know, I, I, my best friend, Kendall, Lost him to, you know what I'm saying? I pills. never asked you that. It was pill. Oh. Yeah, so he overdosed. He OD'd uh, Fetty, fentanyl. Damn. Exactly. And even before that, like with him and my cousin Marcus, like those are two of the closest people to me. I saw both of them go through it. One made it out, one didn't. But you really see how, especially with, you know, perks and pills and whatnot, that person isn't there. Is not. Like it's like it's like that get out shit. Like they're sunken down. Like they they may be subconsciously there a little bit, but that's not the person you're talking to. It's not. Yeah, and they they know that. I mean, even with like you know Cash, like Rahim mm. Allah, may Allah yeah. mercy upon yeah. him. He yeah. passed away. Yeah, in 2022, and uh, like I I remember seeing a picture of him mm -hmm. right before he passed away. Mm -hmm. You would never you would recognize him, you but know it was him, like, but it's like nah, oh my gosh, yeah. he looked like he had Down syndrome. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah, it, it, and, it, and it hurt me because it was like, you know, we 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 can do something about it. But at the end of the day, it's up to them. You know what I'm exactly. saying? It's up to them to make the decision. Yeah, and that's why, like, I'm very fortunate and blessed, like that I did. Uh, you know, get sent away, and I had mm -hmm. to make a decision. Like, all right, am I going to continue to do this or? Did you yeah. ever, while you were, um, you know, uh, messing with the drugs, did you ever do rehab? I did. So they, they, the, the court made me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. I was just trying to get through it. And you, you know can, you can leave rehab on your own, right? As a patient. Oh, so no, I was never an in-house patient. I was okay. an outgoing patient. Okay. I think that's what the terminology. So I would go in, yeah. do the classes. Yeah. Go about my business. Yeah. Right up here on Main Street. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh. You know, I was never a patient patient, but right, I had to right. go for classes and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and again, I, I use these two because they literally were the closest to me and one ended up, you know, still alive, one not rest his soul. They both went to rehab. And even another friend of mine that had to go to rehab for drugs, it's like, it's so easy for them, not easy for them, but you usually see that that doesn't really work afterwards for some it reason, doesn't. bro. It doesn't. Um, Marcus, my cousin Marcus, like you, he got locked up. He did about a year. And that's what helped him out. 
Because yeah. when he got locked up, of course, he couldn't, you know, do drugs. I mean, you probably can, but he... Oh, yeah, you do, yeah, he yeah, got yeah, him. Yeah, 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 He wasn't doing it. Um, He was in county. He wasn't in prison or nothing. Okay, that makes sense. And man. so he... But he, you know, that's what set him straight. Kendall, he did go to rehab, but even, you know, he would check himself out and it still didn't do anything. Marcus, even when he went to rehab, he would check himself and didn't do anything. And I'm like, damn, yo, like... I hate to say it, but I'm like, damn, I kind of wish Kendall would have got locked up. You know what I'm saying? And then with Marcus, I'm like, damn, nigga, I'm I'm thankful that you got locked up. Yeah. Like, it really isolated you away from the bullshit and whatnot. Yeah. Um, so speaking of locked up, I've never asked you this, and if you can talk about this on camera, I don't know if you can or not. But the day the the day you got locked up, when like you said, there was like, all right, bro, this is enough. Like, we're gonna hold you down for a little minute. Mm -hmm. Um, what like that day, like what transpired? How did you get you know locked up that final time? So. It was me, Cash, and two other individuals. We was going out from Odington to Columbia. So we was traveling on 32. Mm -hmm. Get pulled over. You smoked the liquor coming from my from my mouth. You were driving? Yeah. Okay. So I do sobriety check. We didn't even get to the sobriety check. Firearm falling out my out my coat pocket. Mm. He threw me on the ground. And like actually, like every time like it, it does cross my mind where I drive on that side of town. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, I, I would want to go and meet that officer because mm -hmm. he could have killed me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The fact that that firearm did come out of my pocket. Yeah. His name is Officer Marino. If he's watching this, man, I want to I wanna thank you. You know what I'm saying? If you happen to see this video, man, I want to thank you. And like, if I do ever, you know, I, I remember how he looks like, but his name is Officer Marino from Howard County Police Department. He asked me, like, after he put me in the handcuffs, he was like, oh, are you trying to pull that firearm on me? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because it was loaded. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was like, nah. I was like, nah. It just fell out. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It just fell out. Yeah. And, um, and you know, because people people get killed for way less. Yeah. Way you know what I'm saying? Less. So it was like, I'm, I'm thankful, bro. I'm thankful. Like, it, had it would have been another officer, I may not be having this conversation. But, right. you know, a week prior to that, I got put on probation. So I just got, basically, I pled out to a guilty charge of uh, conspiracy to distribute marijuana. Mm. Possessing with distribution uh, of uh, marijuana, which mm -hmm. at the time was a narcotic, it wasn't legal then, right? So yeah. it was. This is twenty fifteen, right? Twenty, excuse me, twenty fourteen going into twenty fifteen. Well, you so. get bagged for having a dime. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like the laws mm -hmm. now, like even now, like I'm under the old law. Like if I get mm -hmm. caught with certain. Certain certain uh possessions of like firearms and right. like narcotics. Yeah. Oh, 30, 30, 40. We talking 30, 40 years as opposed to somebody like you. Right. You may get you may do two, you may get sentenced to two years and get out in, in months. Mm -hmm. But because I'm under an uh, old guideline, mm -hmm. right? See, this is where the system is so effed up at. They will push the new guys out, but the old guys that got their old numbers. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, nah. send them out of here. Mm. You know what I'm saying? They look at us as like the bigger threat, even the ones that, like like myself that changed their life around and stuff like that. But um, I'll get to that in a minute. But point is, is that, you know, once they saw like, oh, he ain't learning. You know mm. what I'm saying? No bond. So I couldn't bond out and go back to the same cycle. Yeah. So I, it was no bond. Uh, I was in Howard County. And um, the, uh, the lawyer was like that I had Joe Murtha. Joe Murtha represented one of the police officers that killed Freddie Gray. Really? Yeah. So, so this this wow. nigga he 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 tied in. I think he a Jew. Mm. So this nigga he he he's tied in. He represented one of the Baltimore Ravens who um forget what he got caught up for. But anyway, he was like, yeah, we'll get you out in two and a half years. That was a lie. The judge is saying this. No, the lawyer. The lawyer said oh, okay, that. Okay. Okay. So I ended up doing uh convicted and sentenced to five mm -hmm. with armed drug trafficking. But it was just five, no probation or nothing. I ended up getting out in four. But as I learned the law, I was like, all right, well, this is actually the best deal. Because normally people was getting five, 10 years all suspended, but five. So they okay. would have to do five, but they got another five years of probation or parole uh, when they get out. Okay. I didn't have that. So so you're currently not on any type of probation I'm on right nothing. Now. I can leave okay. the country. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I, I, I made out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But they was like, nah. You know, we got to send this dude away. Mm. So that's what they did. Bro. And how old were you then? I was 20. 20 years old? I was old. only 20 years old, bro. <laughs> I just turned 20. And you went to Jessup, right? I went everywhere. Initially? I went everywhere. I was in, not everywhere, but I was in JCI. I was in ECI, which is out there by the Eastern Shore. That's yeah. the biggest Maryland correctional facility mm -hmm. in Maryland. 
Um, shout out, shout out to uh, Lumpy, uh, a good friend of my mom's. He just he just came home from out that way. Eastern Shore. Yeah. 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 He came out at a good time because boy, that joint. It's it's around the winter time out there. It's like when it normally, for some reason, it just get treacherous. Mm. So yeah, I I was out there for a couple of years, and then I came home from Brock Bridge before they shut Brock Bridge down. So you're 20 years old. Mm-hmm. What was the first place you went to at 20? JCI. JCI. And your very first day, like, what was? Did it hit you then? Like, what was that like? Your very first day, them doors locking behind you, and you like, damn, I'm here. Like, what was that like? I knew for a fact that I couldn't be doing what everybody else was doing. Because everybody else in that jump was getting high. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's why I was saying, kind of going back to like how you said, like you wish your, your uh, Kindle would have got locked up. It's not always the case. You don't mm. know. Because a lot of people, i seen jokers go in, you know, smokers. Yeah. They just smoke nothing but, but pack all day. Right. They'll come home, they'll be on meth, fentanyl, mm. everything. Yeah. Because they done got exposed to K2, uh, suboxone. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. In the in 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 the in the in the in the system, they call it uh OJ. Because it's like a little orange strip. Mm-hmm. It's like this big, mm-hmm. but you can get them in big pieces. And you put it on the spoon, they snort it up. With some mm. little bit of water, they snort it up and it gives you a heroin effect. Mm. These jokers be walking around like zombies. So I knew I couldn't be effing around with that. I mean, I ain't playing with my nose anyway. Well, how did you? But you went in as someone who used drugs. So yeah. how when you went in, like, what made you say, okay, I'm not going to use it anymore? Niggas was getting chopped up. Oh shit. Niggas was getting chopped up. Niggas still getting chopped up to this day. What you mean? They getting stabbed. Like mm. you know, what I'm saying my peoples. Um, they work in a facility. I won't say what facility because I don't want people starting putting stuff together. But um, they work in a facility and. Bro, jokers, they just had the ambulance up there like four or five times this week. This is in Maryland. You know what I'm saying? They had the ambulance up there the five, five, the four or five times this week. Um, head trauma. People getting stabbed in the head, bro. That's tough. People getting stabbed in the head up there, bro. And it's like, I don't I don't know exactly what's going on because I don't have any uh, inmates calling me or, mm-hmm. you know, convicts calling me right now from out of Maryland. Right. Uh, out of JCI, yeah, that is. But uh, I'm, I'm, it's a war going so on. So what in there. typically lead? Well, first off, you're saying you didn't do the drugs because you got stabbed. So I'm guessing you're saying that you're more. I, no, vulnerable. I didn't do drugs because I saw people getting stabbed. Yeah. So I knew I had to be on point. Right. Yeah. I was ready. At say, this so point, like, were like, I wasn't even. I didn't even have the size on me. So right. mind you, like, I just started right. exercising and shit. Like, yeah. So I wasn't about to be nobody's food. You right, know what I'm saying? Right, right. So that made them more vulnerable. They was an easy target pretty much because they high. Target. They you don't know what's going target. on. Next thing you know, they're getting poked up. You you an easy target. So what typically leads to like uh, scenarios or altercations where dudes do, like what's the most common uh, reason for someone to get stabbed in prison? You you hot. You tell them. So uh-huh. people, a lot of people won't tell you this, but Merlin has a very high informant rate a lot of people in maryland are cooperating with the authorities whether they the, whether it be after they sentence mm-hmm. and they go in and they you know be slipping notes telling the ceos this a hey, bop 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 buddy over there he got five knives under his pillow mm-hmm. he make all the knives he make all the wine he sells this he sells that or you just got individuals that made a statement in the courtroom or mm-hmm. in the interrogation room prior to them getting sentenced so you know, if you're on paperwork and people have that paperwork and mm-hmm. they know who you are, mm-hmm. that's strike one. You'll get hit for that. You'll get hit for um, you'll get hit for stealing. You know what I'm saying? If you if you uh, you know, stealing people's uh, deodorant, you get. I seen people get stabbed over deodorant, bro. Mm. Stealing niggas deodorant, stealing niggas soap, stealing niggas food. If you owe drug money, mm. you know what I mean. That would do it. Uh, switching gangs, right? Uh, in, in Maryland, you got uh, people, in, you got an organization that's called the BGF, right? But they, they call them J. I don't know why they call them J. I never asked. Mm-hmm. But they call them J. They, they predominantly in Baltimore. Yeah. But you would see a blood, right? Most of the time, I don't know how it is now, but and most of the time, they at odds. BGF and Bloods? Yeah. And BGF, Black Gorilla fam, right? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. You on point. So... You would see a blood that may go over and, you know, become J, but you would never see somebody that's J, mm-hmm. BGF, come, yeah. go over the blood. So, like, if you swapping gangs and you didn't check out correctly, that will get you hit. Mm. 
And I, I, I've seen that happen multiple times. You know what I'm saying? I've seen it happen multiple times. So what, is it more so, because when I, I may hear, you know, stories about prison, say California, where it's like, you do have, you know, gangs, bloods, and crips, but it's more so predominantly racially divided. Yeah. In the Maryland system, is it is it more so racially or gang divided? It's gang. Okay. It's gang. It's gang 100%. It's not even racially divided at all. Mm. But that's also what makes uh, Maryland, in my opinion, soft. Mm. Because when you have individuals that are tied to a gang, right? Yeah. Um, a lot of times they aren't really, they're doing it for protection, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas, whereas though, like you can't, you can't go into the federal system and say, oh, I want to identify as white now. Mm -hmm. Nigga, you're black. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. And you can't do that for the sake of protecting yourself, right? So like in, in the Maryland system, what you would do is this. A lot of people become Muslim, right? Obviously, this isn't the reason why I became Muslim, but you have a lot of people that become Muslim because the Muslim is the majority. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So now they're trying to hide behind the Muslims yeah. for protection when the whole time you was blood in the county. You blood on the streets. Right. You know what I'm saying? But because you're at this uh, particular facility, mm -hmm. which may be JCI, MCIJ, now you want to be Muslim. Yeah. But the minute they send you out Eastern Shore, Cumberland, you blood again. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So like, it's a lot of you dealing with a a low frequency sucker ass nigga, bro. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like jokers that go in the federal system, you can't do that. Yeah. So a lot of people, in it's more racially divided, but it's also city divided in the rate in the in the feds. So obviously DC, you know they 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 run the federal system. Okay. DC. And I'll probably say New Orleans. I've never been in the federal system, but from what my OGs have told me and from what I do know, mm -hmm. D.C. and New Orleans is up there. But the cities are more divided, but at the same time, they will still come together based upon race. Okay. So you're not going to just have a white boy jumping on or five white boys jumping on one black man. And don't think that, you know, going, somebody going to die. From another city, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. somebody going to die. It, it may be jokers from um, from Chicago, New Orleans, Baton Rouge, D.C., and Atlanta. May all come together. They mm -hmm. may even be, have some, some be at odds, but they may all come together just to fight these white boys. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It'd it be like that. But in Maryland, pff, you'll never find that. So when you say federal, is that like, how does how does that work? Is it federal? Are you talking about in Maryland or are you talking about another location? Federal is like United States um, prison bureaus. Uh -huh. The Bureau of, uh, you know, federal prisons. So what you have like in, in what you have is basically in D.C., for example, there's, there's no state. Right. So when you get sent and locked up in D.C. jail and convicted, mm -hmm. uh, you about to get shipped out. So mm. ship, they might send you out to either FCI or USP, United States Penitentiary, mm -hmm. or a Federal Correctional Institute. Mm -hmm. Obviously, a penitentiary is worse. So depending on your charge and if you're like a violent criminal, yeah. you may get sent to the penitentiary. If not, you go into an FCI, like a camp. What's the difference between those? FCI is a lot more... Uh, Laid back, you're in a mm -hmm. cell. Most of the time in the penitentiary, you in a dorm. So it may be like 60 people, mm -hmm. maybe more, in one open space. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, most of the time. I, I believe there's some penitentiaries that do have like cells. I'm not too sure. Yeah. But um, that's the main difference. So like with the federal system, is like people from everywhere. You're not mm -hmm. going to just run into people from Baltimore. You're going to see people from All LA, yeah. uh Minneapolis, Texas, mm -hmm. Detroit. You're going to see people from all over. Got you. You know? You're dealing with so many different characters, too. Yeah, yeah. You know? What was, while you were in prison, um, what was the worst, like, thing or instance you've seen while you were in? Mm. Whether you were a part of or not, because on your YouTube, you did do, you know, like... Prison stories or whatnot, yeah. and I tuned into one that was more so. It was like about a, a, a like a gang fight, right? I mean, I've I've been in you know, won't call it a gang fight because I've never been in a gang, but mm -hmm. I was in a 
We were we were group fights. I we was in a, we was in a gang. We was in a gang fight. You call yeah. it that. You know, was, we was fighting the Bloods. We was in a knife fight, with like really twenty Bloods, but mm. only five. But they only sent five of them on a mission to kill my man. Um, and obviously they were unsuccessful. So it was like it was like twenty of them, twenty of us. And by us, you mean Muslims? Yeah, but <laughs> this is why I tell you, like people can try to and become Muslim all you want. Muslims in the Maryland system, bro, they is not who you may think they are, bro. And this is just from my experience. Mm-hmm. You know what, what I'm you saying? Mean? They soft. Mm. They soft. They they really soft. They'll fight you. They will fight you, meaning mm-hmm. another Muslim, yeah. before they'll fight somebody else. I've seen the biggest guy in the jail. Mm-hmm. This dude was Muslim, right? He would he would bark and yell all day. He'd never bite. Mm-hmm. This nigga was bigger than Refrigerator Perry. Mm-hmm. But That's when it's dude. time when them knives come out, yeah. tuck his tail. Mm. So like I've been in knife fights with, with bloods. They try to kill my man. We got active. I got stabbed right here and then twice in my back. Once alongside my iliocostalis muscle, which is the muscle that protects the spine. Mm. So had I not been in shape, who knows? I could have been paralyzed. Yeah. But I had enough muscle fiber yeah. to slow down the penetration crazy. of a knife. A lot of people don't know like muscles supp- supply blood. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Well, blood is, yeah, muscles ha- hold blood. Yeah. So if you get hit in a certain area, depending on how much muscle mass you have in that area, mm-hmm. can dictate if you'll survive or your recovery. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? How yeah. fast you'll be able to recover. Yeah. Same thing with gunshot wounds. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I know certain people that got hit 20 times and they survived. So is that like why Fifth got hit nine times and was able to... It's a, it's, it's, it's a high chance. Yeah, yeah. It's a high chance. Yeah. I mean, after, you know, the, the 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 bounty and the gift and the blessing of Allah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's a, that, that's a good point. I never thought of that, but yeah. yeah. So you were saying how, you know, in the Maryland systems, like the Muslims maybe don't get as active. Is that because... They ain't saying all of them. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. You're just saying, you know... Some is that would that be more so just because it just ain't in them, or maybe I don't know how this works in the Muslim community. Maybe y'all don't re- start the act of violence first, or maybe like you more so focus on retaliation than starting it, or maybe it's like I don't know. Is it as is it, it somewhat frowned upon? Like, how does that work? It, it depends, it's never frowned upon to defend yourself. I'm talking about not defending yourself, I'm start, talking about being a proactive one. Meaning on the offense. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you got to be on the offense mm-hmm. in order to protect yourself. Right. Because, like, say, for example, like, we knew they was trying to kill him. Mm-hmm. Nobody wanted to act first. Yeah. Oh, you know okay. what I'm saying? Nobody okay. wanted to act first. So, consequently, we got hit. Mm-hmm. We got hit first. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, so that's that why, like, instance, you got to be on the yeah, offense that sometimes. Instance, yeah. You what, know what, what did they want to get at him for? They said that he was hot. They said he, he told, but my whole thing is how the hell is an individual locked up nine years uh-huh. and not, and he's been in general population for nine years. Nobody never touched him. Nobody never tried to kill him, nothing. Mm-hmm. Where's the paperwork? Yeah. But like I did say, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that he's hot because I never, I still to this day never seen the paperwork. Mm-hmm. But to this day, I've never seen the paperwork and individuals said that they saw it, but would never show me it. Mm-hmm. So everything happened so fast. They yeah. ain't show me it. And he said that he never made a statement. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I never I never got the paperwork from him because leading up to it, like I said, things happen so fast. Yeah. It, there is no investigating. You just gotta react now. Yeah. But my whole thing was how the hell do you get how the hell is an individual in the system for nine years, four or five different prisons, mm-hmm. and Nobody never Nothing. shows the paperwork. Look, How does that work? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like I, I felt as though it was something more behind it. Mm, they just needed that scapegoat. But they the used reason. that as a scapegoat, yeah. <clears throat> I don't know what it could have been, though. Could have been, could have been drug related, yeah. could have been money related. Yeah. I don't know. So let me get your take on that today. You're someone, you did five years, four, four years, and ten toes, you never told, you know what I'm saying? You never, your name isn't any paperwork or anything like that. But today, that's kind of like, like the norm for people to tell and snitch and whatnot that, that yeah. are involved, that are yeah. voluntarily involved in the streets. Yeah. 
And I know you I can tell by your social media, you're an advocate for, you know, that being some sucker shit, which it is. But like, what's your take on that being so normal today with dudes that jump off the porch but still end up telling and being in paperwork? I think it's it's extremely selfish, but it's more so like the end of my bone to pick ain't really with them. It's mm -hmm. really with the people that's involved with them that may not have told, but they still associated with them. So now your man's, you know that's in him. You know if you get caught, you are going to jail because of this man. You know he's going to tell. Why are you still putting yourself in a predicament to associate yourself mm. with sucker individuals? Yeah. Like Joker, who I used to run the streets with. Mm -hmm. First name start with an A, last name P. I know you're talking about. Um... When I look back, like, I'm like, I, I was an idiot. You know mm. what I'm saying? This also goes back to the drugs. Like, you're not really in your right frame of mind. So yeah. it's like, I know he would have told. And mm. to this day, his baby mother is locked up because of him. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Still sitting behind. You know what I mean? Because right. of him. So it's like, we, we got to be responsible. Not we, but y'all got to be responsible as men that's in these streets. If that's what you're going to do to really analyze, you know what I'm saying? Really analyze the person who you are dealing with, bro. Mm. Because I'm telling you, he will get you a life sentence. Keep on playing. Mm. Keep on playing, bro. He will get you a life sentence. He will take time away from your family, bro. And just to save his own ass because he knows when he gets in that system, he is going to be dog food. So why do you think they associate with him still? Do you think it's because they're gullible? Or, I mean, delusional, gullible, whatever, or it's... That's my man's, like, you know what I'm saying? We sandbox. He... It, it be that, but then it be like, sometimes individuals be trying to get the benefit out of the person. Like, the, this person may have clout. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This person may be tied in, like, if people that's, like, on that rap scene, they may be tied into uh, a producer, a musician, or they may, they just got clout. Yeah. Nigga may be the um, the plug on the uh, on the swipe. Nigga, nigga may be a... a uh, have a bachelor's degree in scamming. You know mm, what I'm saying? You, yeah. you don't know. He probably just has access to so much. So yeah. they just continuously associate with him because he has yeah. access to so much stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> to rewind just a little bit, yeah. you did mention that in the prison system, a lot of people convert to Islam for protection. They do. So let me ask you, what was your reason for converting? Because originally when you went in, you mm -hmm. weren't Muslim. I wasn't. And then you changed your life in. So what was your reason for doing such? So it was the fact that death, it wasn't the fact that people were getting killed, mm -hmm. but it was more so like it put the it put the thought in my mind, like, damn, I might not come home. Because mm. <clears throat> this was JCI 2015 when that was off the hook. You know what I'm saying? And um, it made me wonder, I was like, what does happen after death? So I started to read about Islam. I was already studying Islam before I got to JCI, but I was I would read, um, we call them hadith, which is verified stories, authentic stories from uh, the religion, the pioneers of the religion, and um, and within reading that, it just made so much sense. You know what I'm saying? From how the angels of death will approach you in your grave. Um, everything pertaining to the afterlife. Like, I was I was kind of infatuated with it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, so I learned more and more and more, and I just declared Islam to be the truth. You know, it just entered my heart. You know, it, it Allah, he, he put it in my heart, and he has this way about him that we don't understand. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when he does put Islam into your heart, nobody can take it away but you. Were you religious at all before going in? Never, okay. never. And I find it ironic that... So many, not so many, but a nice amount of my family members had a problem when I came home and they was like, oh, he's really practicing. He just didn't do that for protection. Mm. They had a problem like, oh, you need to learn about other religions. Da, 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 da. Mm. Yo, before, that, that before, voice. <laughs> yeah, but, but before declaring yourself Muslim. And at this point, <clears> I'm like, well, everybody in my family was Christian, mm -hmm. is Christian, right? Yeah. But the the issue there was, Y'all waited 20-something years to now tell me that? I need to start learning about other religions when before I was Muslim, that was never on your your your, your radar. It was never an issue. 
but now I got to learn about other religions because I'm practicing a religion. What do so, you? So before you went in, when you were home, they weren't really pressing the issue no, as far as you practicing never, Christianity. Never. Okay. I mean, I'm a grown man at this yeah, point. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. the, the, the audacity yeah. to tell me I need to start learning other religions is like it was given as xenophobia. Mm. It was, it's given like you don't like the fact that I'm Muslim and you you. Alhamdulillah, my wife, we have two daughters. They're both Muslim. They're mm -hmm. both going to wear hijab. They're both mm -hmm. going to be married to Muslim men. Mm -hmm. They don't like that. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're, our legacy yeah. is going to be a legacy of Muslims. You know what I'm saying? So even today, does it still you know, stir up a little tension or controversy with your family? No, nah, they know where I stand. They just want to keep the peace. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> so we don't talk about it. You know what I mean? They don't call me like Christmas was a couple of days ago. Yeah. I don't yeah. call them. They don't call yeah. me. You know, it's nothing personal. I still yeah. check on them. They yeah. my family. I love them. You're not yeah. gonna touch them. Yeah. You know. So that's that's out of respect, I assume, right? Like I'm sure you don't have no anim for people who was talking about um uh, uh holidays and celebrations, yeah. Christianity holidays and celebrations. I mean, I saw you put a post up just saying how to as a Muslim person, how to react when someone says Merry Christmas to you. Like right. you still have it's no animosity, no hurt. You still have respect towards them as of we towards you. Yeah, and right? I said that. Yeah. yeah and yeah. I said that. I was like, you know, you don't dis you don't be disrespectful when you when somebody says like if you walk in and say Merry Christmas, right? Mm -hmm. Depending on what I'm doing, if I can avoid even responding, I'm gonna avoid responding. But gotcha. if it's you, obviously you know, I'm going to respond and say, look, bro, I'm Muslim. Like, I don't, mm -hmm. you know, I don't celebrate that. Right. You know what I'm saying? And if it goes deeper into detail, like, I don't have no problem with explaining why we don't celebrate that. Yeah. You know, but certain individuals, um, like, they, I was just watching a video with a fleet of people in Lebanon, which mm -hmm. is a Muslim country. Yeah. Right? To my knowledge, predominantly Muslim country. They were at, there was a podcast that he was asking the people in Lebanon is celebrating Christmas haram, meaning impermissible. Mm -hmm. All the Muslims over there saying, yeah, all of them. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, it, it, I hate to be religious here, but it, it goes back to a saying in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not change the state of the people until they basically change what is within themselves, meaning they would turn away from what is good, what Allah gave them, and go to something else. Mm. So celebrating the Christmas from the Muslim um, uh, point of view, right? This is something that can nullify your Islam. This can take you away from Islam because of the belief that Jesus is the son of God. We don't believe in that. We believe he was a prophet and a man and we respect him. Mm -hmm. But you're celebrating his birthday. We can't even celebrate our own birthdays mm. in Islam. It's impermissible. We don't we do not do that. So when it is like, it's just another day, like you, another day. you recognize that you've, your your age changes, age but changes, it's not yeah. like a celebration or anything. Nah, the way they celebrate it and the fact that, you know, <clears> you have Muslims that do celebrate Christmas. It's, and, it, and look at Lebanon today. You know what I'm saying? Like any of the people that's in Lebanon right now, look at your country. Look at your country. I'm not saying our country's any better. I probably would want to live in Lebanon. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? If it wasn't a war going on right outside of Lebanon and yeah. Israel and, you know, Palestine right now. But look at your country. You know what I'm saying? Well, look at the economy. Look at the state of your people. Turn back to Allah. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to be like the non-Muslim. Be who you were born, which is Muslim. You know what I'm saying? And I just find it, I find it disappointing where we have to really please, like you, you don't please Muslims, right? Because you're not Muslim. Mm -hmm. You don't got to go out your way to do that. Yeah. But I find it very disheartening when we have people from Muslim countries that want to go out the way to please the non-Muslim. Be yourself and you will be respected by everybody. Mm. Like how you, you're respected by everybody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you are yourself. Same with you. you and, and, and then when two people have that mindset, then respect is, is it don't even got to be said. Like it's it felt. Don't. You it know what don't. I'm saying? It don't. Um, two questions. One, so for like Muslims that do take part in Christmas and whatnot, um, isn't it like, uh, it's a feel that isn't drinking like frowned upon in it's, it's, Islam? It's impermissible. It's impermissible. Yeah. So... When they when they do stuff like that, but still say you know I'm Muslim and they you know uh, do uh, Ramadan, they still partake in mostly Muslim things, but still some that aren't that are frowned upon it. Like what's like is there is that just like okay it's no big deal? Like how does oh, that work exactly? Deal. It's a big deal because you got people that are watching mm -hmm. and that will believe that. Oh, if this one person says that it's permissible for us to drink, mm -hmm. 
you're going to influence some like if Devin Haney, Devin Haney's Muslim, for example, mm -hmm. right? Or Javante Davis, he was right. just at our masjid. He was yeah. just at our mosque the other day in Woodlawn. Mm -hmm. uh, he took a shahad and became Muslim. May Allah preserve both of them, Haney and uh, Tank. If they go on their platforms and start drinking yeah. and like endorsing like yeah. vodka and liquor companies and yeah. smoking cigars and stuff like that, people are gonna be like, oh, I can do that. Mm. I can marry four wives and 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 still drink and smoke and do oh that's the religion for me and no 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 it don't work like that and that's why I said you know it because saying? it'd be mostly celebrities that you know uh, are Muslim or claim to be Muslim that do stuff like that they and do. then they give like and, and me I'm look I'm outside looking in like oh so you can still be that's why I asked literally because I have that mind but yeah. oh you can still be Muslim and and do this and do nah, that, that and that's the, then that's why I always say like don't judge the religion judge. Judge the individual. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, Islam is perfect. We are not. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, even myself, like, I error every day. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But it's certain things, like, I'm just not going to do. Like, I've been sober going on nine years. Um, I I don't even touch women. That's another thing that's impermissible. You're not going to see me shaking Stacy and Sally's hand. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? At a business meeting. No, I'm Muslim. Like, alhamdulillah. Like, I don't... You know, it's from our religion. Yeah. Our culture. We don't we don't touch women. It's all about respect. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I'm not going to go out my way to please people. I'm not going to feed my desires. And if I do feed my desires, it's going to be in a way where nobody's going to know. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to... I'm going to be behind the scenes doing things I don't want to... I'm not supposed to be doing it as opposed to doing them for the world to see. Yeah. That is the problem today. Everybody can see what you want to do because you found it cool to post it on social mm -hmm. media. We got a lot of celebrities that do that. Yeah. You know? Even even before that, like before the post and whatnot, um, in America, Muslims have always been, they get like, you know, looked at a funny way from non-Muslim Americans yeah. and whatnot. And they still do. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And I don't know where it started. I know that 9-11 had a... It's, it, I, I look at it like black people and pit bulls as well. And I love... I think pit bulls are meant for black people for this reason. You may have a pit bull that was raised in a bad circumstance, mm -hmm. that was neglected, that was taught to be violent. Mm -hmm. And because of that, it naturally formed a reaction that is, you know, it's going to be aggressive, it's going to be violent because of, you know, how it was brought up and whatnot. And p when a pit bull attacks a person, they think every pit bull is violent and aggressive. Hmm. When black people, we react off of the violence that was put upon us going back to slavery days hmm. that still travels through generation, that generational trauma. Damn. So when a black person does react in that way, they think every black person is going to do it and they think that is for no reason. They just think, oh, we're just born this way. Nah, this is something that a reaction that we got from y'all. You know what I'm mm. saying? And I say, and I correlate that with Muslims because with 9-11, yeah, uh, you know, the hijackers, I believe they were Muslim, right? Yeah. And people say, oh, they were Muslim? Like, those individuals were Muslim out of the millions of people on this planet that are Muslims? Yeah, vast majority are like that. They have yeah. a bad rap. They're all, you know, the exact it's same. It's crazy because it was just a small percentage. Mm -hmm. A small percentage of the Muslim population it was affiliated with Al Qaeda. It wasn't even a fraction, bro. It yeah. wasn't even. A, it wouldn't even put a dent in the percentage margin. Mm -hmm. How many people that were in the car with Al Qaeda, mm -hmm. you know, that 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 participated in, and and think that that was okay? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, it's 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 disappointing to also to believe that people will actually believe that. We're the problem where we have the United States government that funds every war, every war. Like we're talking disease. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. the, the the war in Gaza. You're 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 getting involved with Ukraine. We're sending our money over there to Ukraine to fight Russia because you don't like Russia because y'all got Donald Trump out of there. Donald mm. Trump was still in office. We wouldn't even be sending Ukraine Nathan nah. because there wouldn't be no war over there. Yeah. That's a topic for another I, day. Yeah, 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 but the point yeah. is, is that, you know, there's terrorists and oppressors in every government, every religion, every um uh uh colored uh people of color, people mm -hmm. whites, they don't care what race you're from, mm -hmm. you're going to have evil, bad people, bro. Yeah. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? And 
the media's agenda is to do what? To make the black man look the worst, to make Islam look like terrorists, um, to, and ultimately to keep you in the blind, and they continue to lie to you. You know what I'm saying? Blind, and scared. Blind, but y'all, y'all, y'all know that by now. Blind and you know scared. Blind, yeah. and scared. Yeah. blind and scared. Blind and scared. Y'all know yeah. that, though. That's the best, you know, method of controlling, blind and scared. Um, Real quick, to rewind, how you said, you know, Tank and Devin Haney are Muslim, and uh, Tank just recently converted, and he changed his name. He no longer go by Shavante yeah. Davis. You as well changed your name. And even going back to, you know, I, from what I know, the first person that publicly did it, Malcolm X, Muhammad Ali, um, yeah. My question is, when converting to Islam and changing of the given birth name, like, what's the purpose behind that? You want to have a Muslim identity. It's mm-hmm. very important to have a Muslim identity. Like, you probably wouldn't. Like, today I'm wearing my um, my kifaya, right? People will call it the Palestinian bandana, whatever you want to mm-hmm. call it. I'm, I'm wearing that, but not right now. But I also yeah. have, you know, a hat that says Islamic State of Mind. Shouts out the Dawa Department for hooking us up. Um, I always keep an Islamic identity, mm-hmm. whether it be my pants above the ankles, um, just because that's what you're supposed to do. You should mm-hmm. want to do that. Is it mandatory to have an Islamic identity? No. Mm-hmm. But you should want to have a Muslim identity wherever you go. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Wherever you go so people know that you're Muslim. You know what I'm saying? And, um, ch- you know, to answer the question, the changing your name isn't mandatory, mm-hmm. right? But you should want to do that. Um, What's the I, meaning behind yours? So Abdul Wali mm-hmm. means servant of. The Abd mm-hmm. is servant. Ul means of the protector. Right, so Abdul okay. Wali would mean the servant of the protector, which is who Allah. This is one of his ninety nine names and attributes mm-hmm. um, that we know of. There's more, but only he knows the other names that he ascribes himself to. But we only know ninety nine. Okay, from the mankind. Yeah. Um. So, us, uh, you know, like uh, Tank. I think his name is uh, Abdul Wahid, which means servant of the only one. You know what I mean? Which is another name of Allah. Abdul Wali just means servant of a protector, but the Arabic language is so broad that um one name can have different meanings. Mm-hmm. So Wali can mean friend, it can mean supporter, protector. Uh yeah. Did I say supporter? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um yeah, it can have different meanings. Okay. But I didn't have to do that. I wanted to do that yeah. because I want to have an Islamic identity. I wanted to have an Islamic identity when I came home. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And because, you know, Ant does have, you know, a bad stigma attached to it. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. That's like that's like when people, you know, cut yeah. their hair because it has, you know, bad energy attached to it and whatnot. Yeah. Um, so, all right. <clears throat> While you were in prison, you didn't only uh, convert to Islam, which, you know, helped structure it and change your life for the better. You also found fitness and training and whatnot. Y'all know that. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all know that, man. Y'all know that. This is what I do, man. Yeah. It gets me excited. <laughs> so, so like, what even, when you went in, what attracted you towards that world? Because when you went in, you were bony as hell. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You did not work out. Uh, you, you did play sports. But mm-hmm. you didn't, as far as training and whatnot, that just was not you. No, sir. Right? So when you was locked up and, you know, I would talk with Cash, you were like, yeah, I visited, uh, visited and like, he looking good, he working. I'm like, I literally can't even picture that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, like, what attracted you towards that world when you were in? Uh, I had to get in shape. You had to get in shape because, like I said, it was a lot of violence going around. Mm. If you're an individual that, and I'm not saying, like, the biggest guy can't get folded up. Mm-hmm. But what I am saying is that the odds of that happening are very slim if you know what you're doing. So getting in shape, protecting myself were two things that were mandatory that I I knew I had to do for myself. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? On top of that, once I developed the love for it, I knew I wanted to make a business out of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When I came home, I knew it was going to be lucrative because I would always read like magazines, right? Yeah. Uh, Men's Health magazines and stuff like that when I was in. And I'm like, man, I can make some money out of this when mm-hmm. I come home. But I need to make sure that I'm in the best shape possible because I want to do as less competing as possible, meaning with other competitors. Yeah. Out here, we know it's a lot of distractions. It takes a lot more, put it like this, the amount of work that I put in yeah. and the way I look, my physicality, my skill set, 
trying to obtain that out here, mm-hmm. it would take the average man probably probably 20 years. Mm. Pro- probably 20, depending on his circumstance. Yeah. Probably 20 years. So why was yours able to be obtained in a shorter amount of time? You know what I'm saying? Because I had, I had no kids, no wife, no job. Mm. I'm sitting around all day. What you think I'm going to do? Yeah. I can yeah. sleep on time. I can eat on time. I was hydrated. I was in shape. No drugs. You know what I'm saying? So, and they say, like, in prison, like, your body is preserved more. Yeah, it, it's definitely preserved more. because. Yeah. But you got to work out. Uh-huh. Like, if you don't yeah, work if you, out. If you work towards yeah, it. Yeah, right, like, right, if you right, don't right. work out, yeah. man, you're done. If you don't exercise, you're done because of the simple fact the food is so bad. Mm. High in sodium. The food is high in processed junk, mm-hmm. which is going to wreck your testosterone. I done mm. seen men that are 30 just early 30s, mm-hmm. diabetes, getting mm-hmm. insulin, high blood pressure, holes in their leg, about mm-hmm. to get limbs chopped off, amputated yeah. because they are not exercising and they're just eating donuts and honey buns all day, you know? What, um, I got a story and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to top that with a question. Yeah. I'm a part of a group chat that we've been with in this group chat for years. Yeah. And one of the persons in this group chat ran track, but never really like lifted weights or worked out anything. Yeah. And I remember one day him asking, like, like people, we were talking about hitting the gym and all that. He was like, what's the point of working out? What's the point of hitting the gym and all that, right? He said that. Yeah. Which I, I thought was like, I didn't even know how to answer because I thought it was such a, you know, crazy question to ask and all that. So my question for you is, why do you work out? And two, Working out for you, is it more of a gain of mental or physical with you personally? So, it's mental. It's mental. Not really physical. But answer, give me the first question again. Why do you work out? Why do I work out? Okay, so it's definitely mental, but why I work out is for my mental. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I I really do this, I I said it a couple couple weeks ago, I do this for my safety. And mm-hmm. for your safety and everybody else's safety, because mm-hmm. if I don't do this, mm-hmm. um, I will crash out. Mm-hmm. I will crash out. My temper is very short. You know what I'm saying? I don't really tolerate a lot of bull crap. And obviously, living in a world that we live in today, people like us don't really fit in. I'm, mm-hmm. just, I'm just being yeah. honest. Yeah. We, we, we really don't fit in. You know what I'm saying? From the agenda that they're trying to push out onto us, we don't got to talk about that. But what they're trying to shove down our throats that we have to basically strip the masculinity away from men and give it to the women and then have them control us. But then at the same time, y'all don't respect women. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? It's just, it's whatever. Yeah, that's we have to be individuals that have a body that is a weapon. If you don't have a body that is a weapon, you are a target. Mm-hmm. You are a target. And I refuse to be a target. Yeah. I, I got I got three women I got to take care of. I refuse to be a target. Yeah, that that's just that's just me. You're yeah. gonna be the first one to go out. I'm front line. And, yeah, yeah, I'm front line. And, and I'm saying if you if you don't work out, then you'll be the first one to go out in a bad way. You're gonna be the first yeah. one to get caught and get dealt with. Yeah, a- ammunition <clears throat> prices are going up. Yeah, pay attention. Ammunition prices are going up, and yeah, this is the most heavily art. You know, we got the best artillery in the world. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? In my opinion, right here in the U. S. But don't think for a second it's going to come a time where we just gonna not have to use these Bro. bow and arrows. Mm-hmm. We talking about really knowing how to swing a knife and machete, really seeing who's really telling you. And it may not be in our lifetime, but make sure your kids is ready. Oh yeah, bro. After you know what I'm I think COVID is like the biggest realization of anything can and will happen. Yeah. Like, come on, bro. Like, yeah. and then to agree with you, for me, it's mental for sure. How you say you would crash out? I would crash in if I don't work out. Like, I would just, I would be naturally lazy. I wouldn't do nothing. Bro, I felt it. And I felt yeah. it when Azori was born. I just uh-huh. had my my second daughter two a month ago. Yeah. Bro, when Azori was born and I was out of the gym for those two weeks, I was dealing with a shoulder injury. Mm-hmm. So I'm just not coming back from that. Yeah. Bro, yeah. testosterone. I, I know my testosterone yeah. is down. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Testosterone down. 
energy levels. Mm-hmm. How, what, is this depression? Like, yeah, and, like, and, and see, that's that's this? the average American yeah. that you know, is out of shape. You know what I'm saying? Low testosterone, out of shape, lazy yes. as hell, depressed. And that's not really depression. That's How just do y'all the, deal with that every you know, single day? It just gets deeper and deeper, bro. The other day, How two, do you get out of that? I'm, I'm just yeah. trying, like, it's been a month now, but I'm still trying to get out of it, bro. bro. once I that's feel crazy. a peak of that, I have to get up and go jogging. Two nights ago, bro, it's like 1130. I, I came home. Yeah. I didn't work out the day. I drove home. The next day, I hit the gym. But then for two or three days after that, I didn't work out because I was getting a little sick. So I'm just eating in the house on my computer, not getting no sunlight or nothing, and I feel it kick in. <clears throat> Bro, I um, what happened? I watched a David Goggins video on YouTube, oh, yeah. and I'm like, it woke me up. I was like, oh, shit, hold up. Nah, bro, I went for a two-mile jog instantly. The very next morning, went to the gym for two hours. Like, me and you, when we feel yeah. that, like, nah, we got to shake it off. But it makes you realize how... The mass majority, how they're stuck that, in that that's place. That's normal for them. Yeah, that's yeah. normal for it's, them, it's, bro. It's crazy. It's crazy. And it's if you're crazy. not on point, I'm telling you, <clears throat> like it get, it gets worse when you're older. That's yeah. the problem. That's like y'all not realizing. Yeah. Like you're digging a deeper hole yeah. every single day. Yeah. New Year's is in what three days? Don't mm-hmm. wait for no New Year's. You better start today. Like if you watching bro. this, you better start. ASAP because I'm telling you it's going to get worse if you got kids it's going to get worse I you al- have to start mm-hmm. now I always say with the New Year's resolution thing I think that's a setup they only say like 9% of New Year's resolutions are successful first and foremost but yeah. with New Year's resolutions bro like I've, I've been saying this for years because my birthday's in November so I would always be like yo New Year's resolution if you have one start that shit at the latest in November mm. Because you can go into momentum. the New Year's with that momentum. Like yeah. when you and me, <clears throat> I'm a I'm a walking testimony of that because I started, uh, let's see, November. I, w- I was in a funk, bro, because like this whole summer and even like a little bit of fall and whatnot, I was doing my podcast shit, which is that's my creation. That's what I'm here for. That's my baby. That's my calling. Yeah. But I was still partying heavy. Like right. I was partying this summer heavy, bro. And I'm like, I can party and still Proceed with this podcast shit. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, like November, October, November, I was kind of going through a little, I guess you can, yeah, you can call it depression. Cause I'm like, damn, why am I not, why am I stagnant? I just felt like I was in a hamster wheel. Mm. Why am I not going nowhere? And the day before Thanksgiving, I'm home. I didn't come, I'm home in Charlotte. I didn't come to my family. So I'm spending Thanksgiving alone. The day before, I like, I broke down. I ain't even gonna hold you. Cause mm-hmm. I'm like, damn, yo, like, I'm not going nowhere. Like, why? Mm-hmm. I'm doing a podcast, I'm putting episodes, and I'm like, damn, why is this podcast jumping my mind? Ain't why is this happening? But you know what I'm saying? Blaming the outside world, outside mm-hmm. sources. And I just broke down. Bro, the next morning, I woke up. And it, I literally got out of my bed and looked in the mirror and was realized I was looking at my problem right then and there. Mm. This is the day. This is Thanksgiving Day, right? So I go to YouTube. The very first, mind you, I'm drinking. Very first, <laughs> I, I am. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I can still party, and you know what I mean. Yeah. And I would drink. And the day that I drink, I don't get shit done. Mm. The next day, I don't get shit done because I'm recovering. I'm hungover and whatnot. Dehydrated. I wake up. Go to YouTube, very first video on my For You thing is, you know, three things to get rid of to take your life to the next level, something like that. And the three things were woman trying to impress the next person and alcohol. Mm. So right then and there, it hit me. I was like, all right, fuck it. I'm I'm, I'm done with this drinking shit. So, and then I started this something. I don't know if you you ever heard of 75 Hard. It's like a program challenge thing where- 75 days straight. Yeah, Yeah. where you can't drink alcohol. You have to stick to a certain diet, two exercises per day, drinking a gallon of water. And take a, a progressive picture every day. Damn. So I started it right there. I started 75 hard. And this is right before Thanksgiving. This is right before my birthday. So birth. you're still on it right now. Well, I'm not on 75 hard, but I don't drink. Okay. So, um, but I'm but I didn't do 75 hard because since when I drove out here, it messed it up. Okay. But I went like 30 days. So I'm gonna start it back once I go back to Charlotte. But right then and there it hit me. It was like, I'm not waiting till New Year's. So I'm like, you know what? It's even better that this is right before my birthday, right before Christmas, right before New Year's. That way I can just get the hard shit over with and go into the New Year's with momentum. Yeah. My birthday, I ain't drink. I went hiking on my birthday. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, that, and that was a whole nother thing of really getting it in tune. Hiking as a monster. Yeah, like, I was get, really, and being up top, I just spent like an hour up top just, just gazing. You know what mm. I'm saying? Gazing. The birds, you know what I'm saying, coming and whatnot. And I'm big on symbols. So seeing crows and eagles fly, that's, that's a whole nother thing. But, you know, I, since doing that and since taking accountability, 
that changed my mindset from negative to positive. Mm. Like before that, I would wake up late. I would go to work with a bad mood, mindset, and all that. Like, fuck, I don't want to be here, all this. Mm. I started waking up at 5, mm. doing my workouts early, doing my readings early. By 9 o'clock, I'm half, more than halfway through the list yeah. already. You know what I'm saying? And um, that changed my whole mindset. And I'm big on the power of uh, influence, right? Positive uh, influence, yeah. Bro, since that, I don't drink no more. I'm, I'm good every day. Yeah. Like, I'm sharp every day. I did an episode where I'm with a girl who she's drinking wine and I'm noticing as the episode goes on, I'm seeing her get more and more loose and kind of uh -huh. under the influence. I'm like, shit, that's, is that what I've been looking like these past <laughs> few two years doing these podcast yeah. episodes? I mean, I can't think of more than one episode where I wasn't drunk. Yeah, you, you be lit, bro. You know I ain't gonna saying? lie. You, yeah. you be lit. Yeah, you be like, lit. and I'm like, damn, yo, is that really how I look? And I'm... I'm not, not, but And I don't mean to cut you off, but good. look how look how well you it, it still performs. Yeah. Now imagine if you go a whole year like that. Yeah. And and that's and how what, how well it will perform. Yeah. How well this platform will and is going to perform when you detach yourself from it. And it's crazy you said that. Cause for one, I am doing at least a year because I turned 30 on a Friday. So if I I still don't know if I'm gonna do it when I turn 30, but my mom's like, why not just go for good? I think I'm done for good, but when I turn 30, if I do Slip up that weekend on my 30th, it may happen. But it's crazy that you said that. Since stopping, mm -hmm. just since stopping, got my first sponsorship. Shout out to Magic Mind. Mm -hmm. um, a podcast that when I first started, I looked up to heavy. They're the reason I do captions on my reels. They recently reached out to me. It's called Lair and Lionel. I'm going to probably block it out, bleep it out. But Lair and Lionel, based out of Philly, they reached out to me. Their manager reached out to me. Hey, we're going on tour for a live show tour. We're going to be in Charlotte January 21st. We want you to be a part of it. Be a special guest on it. Whoa. Bro. Yeah, beep that out. But yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Beep that out. And when is that going to be? January 21st. That's lit. Bro, That's at, lit. at the Comedy Zone in Charlotte, you know what I'm saying? This isn't no little, little clubhouse. This is a Comedy Zone that I've been to for plenty of... I saw Bill Bellamy perform there. I saw mm. Linnell perform there. Like, this is a spot... And it's like, they like, yeah, be a part of it. I get like a 20 minute set bet. Like I said, get my first sponsorship, got a interview for a job that I interviewed last year for yeah. and didn't get. And then you were, you were a part of it. They just yeah. called me with the offer today. Yeah, that's getting, all right. getting paid much more than what I am at my current job now. You know what I'm saying? So just a, a, a lot of positive stuff coming off of me changing my mindset, which started with changing the habits, Dude. eliminating the bad habits, which was drinking, waking up late, blaming the world, replacing it with good habits, drinking a gallon of water, having a positive mindset, reading every Straight day, up. like all that positive influence you got to. and it's momentum. Like for the year to start like this, bro, I know 2024 is ready to be that year yeah. for my brand. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and even with you, like when you went into prison, your bad habits were drinking, uh, drugs, all this, you know what I'm saying? Didn't have a true meaning as far as... At all. You know what I'm saying? You converted to Islam, you found working out, and your brand has grown is and is still yeah. continuing to grow. Yeah. You know what it, I mean? It's, it's, a lot, it's a lot more growing we got to do, but yeah. you know, yeah. going back to what you said, bro, like when you stay... I'm all about headspace. Mm -hmm. So like, I still struggle with it, but I'm, that's all I'm about. If, you, if you're in a good headspace... Yeah. Oh, you're in such a good. You're in a good position because a lot of people aren't. Yeah, we're, we're looking at this person, that person. We're blaming this person and that person mm -hmm. rather than, like we said, self accountability yeah. in, in Arabic and Islam. We we call it muhasibat, mm. taking accountability for yourself before you are accounted for. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So taking accounted for. Yeah, so yeah. You, we gotta really look at ourselves. We are the problem. Yeah, it's nobody else's. You reap nah, what you sow. Absolutely, you reap bro. what you sow every absolutely, time, bro. bro. And yeah, yeah, that's that's big. So, and then like you said, we we both got a long way to go. But just to and and I I couldn't even do this with everybody. I at this point now, I don't converse with people with negative thoughts or headspace. I don't do podcasts no more. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, and for the most part, I meet people once we shoot anyway. But if like you, if you didn't progress. Then, but I know that you're the type of dude. That's why it made it so easy for us to run this back. But if you weren't that type of person, I probably wouldn't be here. Yeah. Because I get hit up every day to do podcasts with people, and I'm like, yo, I, I know where you're at now, and it's the mm -hmm. same spot you were five years ago. No progress. I, I, I can't do that because I'm not there. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I gotta, I gotta share this microphone and this platform mm -hmm. with someone with a like every, mind. Every podcast, like I, I'm sure we can use Breakfast Club for example. Mm -hmm. They not, they not about to. 
spend it back with somebody that's still where they was at 10 years ago, yeah. five years ago, yeah, one can't. year ago. Nah, right, right. stay where you at. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And if they don't come back, it's because they way past Breakfast Club. Yeah, man. yeah, facts, you know what I'm facts, facts. That's like, so, Jay, you could say Jay-Z. Jay-Z been on the Breakfast Club. I I mean, I don't know if he would, but I doubt at this point he would. Even though Breakfast Club is huge, but yeah. it's just in that instance. But then you may have someone who fell off years ago, and not just with the rap, just with their lifestyle. They may have fell down a deep hole. Yeah. It's like, you know, you can't really associate with that because I'm yeah. I'm all about moving forward and elevating. Yeah. Now Can't. they now they come out the slum. They come out from you know the, back from the dead. Yeah, yeah. That's a different story. Oh, then they gonna jump on that because that's, that's, that's a good story. Be, that's, yeah. that's good you press. That's good press. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. we we can't we can't be moving backwards, bro. Like nah. even with like what I do, like with the calisthenics uh, community, I got my own team, Team Workhorse. Mm -hmm. It's just certain individuals that have fell off with the brand, with the team, mm -hmm. that I cannot just keep going back to and spinning yeah. back. I, I got too much on my plate to keep checking on another grown man. Yeah. This ain't in you, it's not in you. Yeah. If you're still, you know, content with being where you're at, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I'm not just talking about finances. Right. It starts up here. Yeah. If you're content with being in that same position, bye bye. Yeah. Go ahead, stay stay where you at. Facts. And don't come back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Come back when you're ready. And when you come back, you better be miles ahead because mm -hmm. I'm gonna be miles ahead from where I was just at. You gotta be, bro. You and it's and, it, and it's and it's even with uh I remember Cat Williams said this on Pimp Chronicles. He said, if you're doing the same thing at your birthday celebration that you that you did last year, I don't even want to be a part of it. And that was always funny, yeah. but yo, lately, recently I came across that. Yeah. Like I, I went to someone's birthday party who did the exact same thing as last year and it felt mad weird. Mm. I'm like, nah, like I get it now. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You gotta be about moving forward. Um, to talk about uh, fitness again, and even uh, I want to talk about you know you social media and you being an influencer and your brand. Just don't call me no doing, influencer, doing bro. Numbers. Don't All call right. me an influencer, All right, so let's start there. You, you don't want to be called an influencer. Why a is that? Anti-influencer. Anti. I'm Break very, that down. very that anti. I'm against that. That the whole. I don't influence. I motivate. Mm. Right. That may be a form of influencing. Right. But I don't want to be associated with this whole influencer culture, right? Just because somebody works out, has 100,000 followers, or even they were calling me an influencer back when I had 40,000 followers. Mm -hmm. You have a high following. You are not an influencer until you start making an ass out of yourself. You start becoming a clown, and you are not really, you have no substance. You're mm -hmm. just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, what I provide, I provide a lot of gaslighting content. I do. Mm -hmm. That's just some of my products, and we'll get to that in a minute. Because that's what is feeding the algorithm. I know how to feed the algorithm and take advantage of it yep. because at the end of the day, I have bills to pay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But what I do provide to the general public is very informative. It's very beneficial for my exercises, from our free group workouts that we do during outside season, mm -hmm. spring till fall. Um, down right down here in College Park. Sometimes we're in Baltimore. We got free workouts every weekend. Um, even here in our gym, Rise Up Fitness, right off Main Street in Lower Maryland. Like we have group classes in here for the low. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So most influencers are really more so about themselves. They're very selfish, right? They're, unless you got a high following mm -hmm. and you're going with the wave and not against it, mm -hmm. going against the grain, right? Yeah. They're not going to work with you. You know what I'm saying? Most influencers don't work with me because, one, I'm not going to work with them. They just, I don't, I don't get along with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I don't really agree with what a lot of people are doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? In the fitness industry, but I'm a fitness professional. I'm not a fitness influencer. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it's a I like difference. That tag. I like that tag. It's a big difference. It sounds like, but it sounds like you just tie influence with making an ass out of yourself and being negative. What if everything is positive? Like, could that still be called an influence? Or are you just saying and that whole influencer thing today is only tied to people who kind of, you know, sell their soul, if you would, to yeah. get that, uh, uh, you know, get the certain following you, you, or whatnot? You got to look at it like this. Like, I'm Muslim. So mm -hmm. it's certain things I can't do. Like, mm -hmm. go on my social media platform, you will not find any women on my platform. Why mm -hmm. is that? Well, for one, we don't, we, we, we're not going to be shaking hands and 
having me do videos with another female with a leotard or a, a onesie on, mm -hmm. you know, jiggling her butt doing RDLs and barbell squats. Yeah. We're not going to do that. We don't exploit women. You know what I'm saying? So we're not going to promote women on our accounts mm -hmm. for the sake of followers and being liked. A Muslim doesn't do that. We're not going to promote music. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Look on my platform. Where can you find music? You can't. You have sounds. I got audio. I got yeah, sounds. Audio, audio I got and sounds, sounds and I got yeah, audios. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's never like a bass on any of my audios. It's never a drum. It's never a... Mm -hmm. no, it's never none. Of, it's no type of little Uzi, yeah. little dirt. I mean, yeah. None of them niggas. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I'm really, I I keep it authentic as possible, mm -hmm. and nobody can ever take that away from me. Had I not did that, because mm -hmm. you got Muslims that don't do that. Yeah. Had I not did that, then yeah, yeah, he's an influencer mm -hmm. for sure, okay. for sure. But I'm not. I'm not here to be liked. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm here to make an impact. Yeah. But I'm not here to be liked. So you mentioned the authenticity, which yours is from day one. And you do a lot of throwbacks with your content, which I love, which actually yeah. motivates me to start doing that. Um, I'm a definitely, you know, especially with the year transcending just the past 12 months, taking in where I've been yeah. and where I've gone it's to. Great. But yeah, um, I love how you do that. And what now you mentioned the authenticity. As of today, you're at over 100,000 followers. I am. I didn't see myself at this point, but yeah, as it's, of not, today, it's not what people think it is. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah, <laughs> over. So my, 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 th my question for you is, you know, what would you say really attributed to that to get into where it's at now? So a lot of people, and I'm glad you brought this up. So a lot of people, it was a joke. He made a stupid comment the other day. Shouts out to Shuebe. He just texted me, uh, Rip Right. Um, a lot of people have this, not even a lot of people, but a certain number of people have this misunderstanding that people like rip right are the reason why people know me. We've had a $22 million, a 22 million view video, a mm. 3 million video, a 4 million video. We've had millions on top of millions of views from just, just a handful of videos mm -hmm. that we've uploaded this year. None of them have Rip Right attached to it. What What is this whole Rip Right? Um, so even... Rip Right is, he's another, now he'll call himself a fitness influencer. Okay. He, he's not. I mean, he might be. I don't know. It depends on how you define it. It's not, yeah, it sounds objective. You know what I'm saying? Much. But at the same time, like, so so he's a another guy that's in the calisthenics community. He's a mm -hmm. Muslim brother. He's a guy I've been working with for years. That's who I was getting the ripsticks from. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Way back in the, uh, not way back, but a few years ago. Yeah. Um. But people have this misunderstanding that he's somebody that that put me on. No, 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 no. I put myself on. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The celebrities that I am plugged in with that do know me, mm -hmm. I'm talking about individuals that played in the NBA, right. NFL. Jonathan yeah. Stewart follows me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Um, Jerry, yeah, Stephon, Stephon Marbury. Marbury sh you know, shouted both of us out. Yeah. You know what yeah, I'm saying? He still that. shows love. Like, mm -hmm. shouts out to Stephon. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Real. Like, Stephon Marbury, a real one. A real one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, Jerry Stackhouse. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, these individuals... Like, even um, Deion Sanders... Uh, I didn't even know who she was. Deion Sanders' ex-wife mm. follows me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Shador and... Uh, what's the what's the kid's name? Shador and... Um, Shador and... I forgot. I forget, I forget his name. The, but the, they mother... The safety. I forgot yeah, they, they mother yeah. followed me from the Duck Walk video mm. that we did. You know what I'm saying? Four million views. So it's like, the stuff that I did was from my creativity. Like, you're not going to be successful in any field if you are not creative. Facts. You have to be creative. And a lot of people nowadays, they lack creativity. That's why they, their their audience and their, yeah. and their brand and their content is ass because mm -hmm. you guys aren't creative. You mm -hmm. have to get in that creative state. You have to be, almost become a child again. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. you have to be a child again, bro. I'm telling you. That, and you will find yourself... Blow past everybody. And which even means growing and adapting as you move forward. Your videos Facts. today aren't the exact same as three years ago. No. You know what I'm saying? So your creativity doesn't stay stagnant. And, you know, I, I've learned that, you know, even in the past year with my videos, my reels and whatnot, I'll look at, you know, stuff from a year ago. I'm like, damn, that shit, it's a hype. But good Lord, that shit kind of <laughs> ass. You know what I'm saying? Compared to, like, videos that I make yeah. now and a year from now, I'm going to look at these videos and be like, eh, they was a hype, but... They ain't really have that transition yeah, or the right. da, 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 like now, like now this shit right here, like this shit right here, and it, 
it's popping now. Like, yeah, you, you get better. You yeah, get better. You have to. You get you better have to. and better and better, bro, as time goes on. You have to adapt. Like, Kobe will probably say the same thing. Mm -hmm. MJ would probably say the same thing. Like, early on in their career, Yeah. you know what I'm saying? Their jump shot was ass, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? The step backs and all that, the dribble, how they would play defense. Like they, they like, man. I'm so glad I don't lock down on my on my uh, on my offense like that. You know what I'm saying? You ha you have to adapt. And I think back to the uh, last dance with MJ. My favorite part of that documentary was when he got beat in the playoffs against the Pistons because they just straight out physical them. They were more physical, and they just kicked his ass. Mm. So what did he do that off season? They they said he emphasized hitting that weight room, mm. getting stronger to really be able to keep up with them. And then next time around, he beats them in the finals and whatnot. And dog that's my them. that's my favorite part. Dog and them. and that's the epitome of you have Pain to be able to adapt. Them, dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like you have to be able to adapt and, um, you know what I'm saying, move on for the better. So I got to ask you this. Go I got to ask you this. Let's right? do it. I remember when, when you was in Charlotte, mm -hmm. you was like, hey, day, this shit about to take off. I remember. Yeah. He was like, he was like world star hit me. Like, I'm, I'm about to do this. I'm about to do that. You laid it out and it happened. Like yeah. you probably gained like over eighty thousand followers from that conversation, and not even not even just the followers on IG. Your brand grew because yeah. you got to traveling, doing these different competitions and whatnot. And you did say such and such world star. So mm -hmm. I gotta ask you this: You had a video on World Star. Yeah, this was your for sure. Correct me if I'm wrong. Most controversial video. When you was at the the gym in Laurel Boys and Girls Club, you had your daughter <laughs> and you had the bench and you did the thing. The muscle up. Yeah. The muscle up with your daughter and you had the bench chained beneath yeah. beneath the both of y'all. And I mean, people were just like, yo, what the fuck? I don't think fuck? that was the most controversial, but up until that point, yeah. it was. Yeah. It was definitely yeah. the most controversial yeah. because yeah. it was like, oh, wait until child services gets involved. Yeah, whatever. yeah. They talking about yeah. safety and whatnot. But I'm going to be honest. I'm going to finish. I'm going to be honest. Even I saw that <laughs> and was like, all right, bro. He doing too much. All right, bro. God, all it takes is for something to yeah. happen and come loose and whatnot. But you, you know, you broke it down. We don't, just... I don't think of the what ifs. Mm. I never think of the what ifs. Like, as Muslims under the context of it, we not even supposed to think of that. Mm. We're supposed to just... If we feel as though it's a problem, don't do it. Okay. I didn't feel as though it was a problem. So mm -hmm. I did it, and um, I felt confident with it. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, when you're confident in doing something, like, Joker's like like us. Like, I understand, like, everybody's viewpoint, right? Because mm -hmm. I look at it when people go skydiving. Like, you're a freaking idiot. Why would you mm -hmm. do that? Mm -hmm. I don't care how much experience with it. Like, I, you would never pay for me enough money to go skydiving. Mm -hmm. The Joker's, what they call it, parkour? Yeah, parkour. When they, back, when they yeah. backflip off of skyscrapers? Buildings and whatnot. And they're climbing yeah, yeah, skyscrapers? Yeah, yeah. Certain people climbing skyscrapers for to raise awareness for um for whatever. Yeah. It can be breast cancer. I'm yeah. not about to climb no skyscraper, bro. Right. And you, you're an idiot. But pe people, that's what they into. Mm. People do that. They're comfortable with it because they've been doing it for so long. You mm. can't tell them nothing. I'm one of them people. Mm. I, will, I can do that again. Mm. You know what I'm saying? My daughter weighs 10, she's 10 more pounds heavier. I can do that again. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Why? Because I'm confident in what I do. You're not confident. So I understand why it will make you feel uncomfortable. That's okay. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm an individual who's what? I'm about this. Mm -hmm. I'm about this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So the minute I feel as though I'm not, I'm definitely going to take a step back. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and so yeah. then we're going to keep applying pressure. I you like know? it. I love it. I love it. I love it, man. Man. So we can probably put that in the video though. I'll send you the video, the actual clips so the yeah, viewers. Yeah, oh yeah, can, I'm definitely going so to the viewers can actually see what we talking so about. So I'm gonna put it on a YouTube video and you know, of course, make a real you know how you know how the real business go, you know what I'm saying? You know, we're gonna cook that up and yeah, whatnot. That's gonna be cooked. Yeah, yeah. That's gonna be cooked. <laughs> we know we gotta cook that up. Yeah, yeah. So um with the competitions and uh like just since last time we spoke, you've had calisthenic competitions going on and whatnot. So just yep. break that down and how that's been going. So I competed in seven this year. So from January till December, I've competed in seven calisthenic competitions and street lifting competitions. So street lifting is basically powerlifting with weighted calisthenics. So a one rep max, like okay. how you would do a squat, bench, yeah. and deadlift. Yeah. But we have muscle up with max weight, uh, squat, barbell squat with max weight, uh, dip with max weight, and then pull up or chin up with max weight. And all those are one rep, you say? 
one rep max. Okay. So you get three attempts. I've been doing that. I'm actually the head judge. I just been honored. Shouts out to Eugene from um, Eugene Jimenez from USA Streetlifting. The president. He just honored me with the title of the head judge of the United States for mm, USA yeah. Streetlifting. Yeah. Uh, I do plan on competing in May, so I gotta find. Um, a backup judge, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because the sport is so it's still growing, yeah. but it has a lot of potential. We're trying to get it eventually in the next four to eight years on the Olympics. Man, I mean, the community yeah. that just the, the light you shed on it from me and others from the outside looking in through your social medias and YouTube. Y'all didn't know about it. Yeah, nobody at knew all, about it. Nobody at knows all. And about it. And, and like, you really like... And that just goes to with you being authentic to your brand. Mm -hmm. It will bring that community. It will bring you to the community and vice versa, the community to you. Yeah. People think, oh, I can't do this because there ain't no audience or community for that. It is. It is, It's bro. just not on Front Street or Broad Street with it, it but it is. is. Yeah. And, yeah. We, and we saw that with our first event here in Maryland, December 9th. We had a very good turnout. We had people. Mm -hmm. We had a guy that was going to fly from Hawaii. Damn. He couldn't get off work though. He was about okay. to fly from Hawaii. We yeah. had guys from Florida, New York, um, all, all up and down the East Coast. They yeah. came to support and compete in the competition here in Columbia, Maryland. Um, the UFL, shouts out to Doc from uh Team Wingate. Uh the UFL, that's another league that I compete in. They uh they have us in contract until the end of next year. Mm. So that's an underground fitness league. That's basically what it stands for, mm -hmm. Urban Fitness League. And we compete against other cities. Mm. So we competed against L.A., New York, and Miami on December 3rd. They they flew us out. They paid for hotel, everything. Like it's They, they pay for us to compete yeah. on these big stages. So That's next sweet. year, it's, it's going to be lit for that, too. That's what's up. Um, How many people were at the first one in Columbia out here? I, I was probably like... 25, almost 30 competitors. Mm. Oh, that's just competing. That's just competing. That's you know hard. what I'm saying? And we had a good turnout for even the audience. You know what mm. I'm saying? The spectators was, yeah. was a good turnout as well. Yeah. So we're expecting this May to be crazy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, It's another, it's a couple other things we ain't going to speak on yet. Yeah. But yeah. once it's final, y'all definitely going to know about it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like the sport of calisthenics has potential to get to that CrossFit. Mm -hmm. We just got to continue uh, pushing the envelope, we gotta keep on showing up. Like yeah. if we want to get it to that CrossFit level, mm -hmm. we have to keep showing up. We have to keep networking, and y'all gotta keep training. Talking to the competitors and the athletes, y'all gotta keep training. You what know? What do you do more, powerlifting with weights or calisthenics? Calisthenics for sure. And with you doing more so calisthenics, I do see a lot of you know people in the comments who probably can't lift for shit. Talk mm -hmm. about how since you do calisthenics, oh, you probably can't do this in powerlifting, yeah, right? So how does too. yeah, yeah? So like, um, my first question is, why do you choose more so calisthenics over powerlifting? Well, it, it, it's kind of it, it's my foundation basically because mm -hmm. that's what I had in prison. Mm -hmm. um, but as I was getting out of prison, I started squatting heavy. Mm -hmm. So I went to a particular facility. I couldn't even squat. 60 kilos, which is like 135 pounds. Mm -hmm. When is this before or after prison? This is before this is right when I was getting out. Okay. My last year in prison. So then that means the <laughs> the stigma that when you in prison, they barely touch legs. Is that saying that's true? That's not for me. Because <laughs> not for me. My last year, that's all I did. My last year okay. in prison, everybody was like trying to Everybody hogged the bench press. Uh, Everybody was in the bench press What about yard. that squat rack? Nope. Squat rack was wide open. So what did I do? All right, cool. I would do endless leg presses, duck walks, and barbell squats. Mm -hmm. And then on my upper body days, it was mainly like burpees. I'll grab a set of dumbbells, do mm -hmm. some variations with that. Push-ups, pull-ups, that's it. Mm -hmm. But my my squat, mm -hmm. People want to. People ask me like, bro, how the hell did you add so much weight to your squat? It's because I got a foundation of that. Mm. And then when I went from squatting on the top of my neck high bar, mm -hmm. and I start doing low bar squat, oh, that mm -hmm. changed the game. So, that changed the game for sure. So, um, what's the reason in prison for not doing legs? First people do legs. People just don't it's have as much though. It's endurance based. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to be having individuals squatting a whole lot of weight. That's not at every facility. Yeah. But most guys just want the look. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Most guys just want the look. When you look in the mirror, you looking at your chest. Right. 
You know what I'm saying? You're looking at your chest and, you know, your biceps and stuff like that. You're not worried about down there, your glutes and all that stuff. But a lot of guys in prison do train legs. So why did That's the first thing to go. Yeah. But you got to think, most guys that... Most guy, most black men, like they, we don't have large calf muscles. You right. know what I'm saying? Like yeah. our genetics won't allow for our legs, but they get but so big. Mm-hmm. Unless you're on like supplements, yeah. creatine, and maybe PEDs if that's what you do. Yeah. But you're not going to get but so big. Like people look at my legs, they're like, oh, he skips leg day. Nigga, like, I squat almost 500 pounds. Yeah, you're squatting. Was <laughs> you crazy. know what I'm saying? Like, but you wouldn't know because I don't train like a bodybuilder. Right. Like I know bodybuilders that came and squat more than me, but they mm. look twice as twice as big, mm. you know what I'm saying? So it, it's a difference between having strength and then just having muscle mass. You got show muscles and then you got go muscles. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. not the same. Yeah. It's not the same. So you, it sounds like you, tr- again, going back to the beginning, we said both say it's more so for mental yeah. and also the training aspect. Like my thing is like, it's hypothetical, but again, after COVID, you never know. Say a zombie apocalypse breaks out. Oh, yeah. If you can, that's why I go jogging. That's why I sprint and jog, but I yeah. jog and that, that's my shit. That's my therapy. Yeah. Jogging. That like, runner's high. Yeah. Like, that runner's bro, high. I like every Sunday I'm doing six, six and a half miles. Like, that's my therapy. Mm. And that's not even to mention the every other day, two miles throughout the day just to get my day started. But mm. my thing is, saying a zombie apocalypse breaks out, whether it's from endurance or just stamina, like if you, if you're just working, out just to get, like you said, the bodybuilder just to look good. You should train, like you said, for combat. You should yeah. train for preparation for anything yeah. to happen or whatnot. The bodybuilders are gonna, most of them are gonna be the first ones to go. Yeah, I, I'm just being honest. Gonna like, get winded. I mean, they already going right now. I mean, I don't. Mm. It, there's you know discrepancies with that, whether yeah. it be the drugs or you know if you got the shot or yeah. whatever. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But they they going right now. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're an individual that really you test your reserve tank you really push yourself to that max limit to the mm-hmm. point where like you about to die in your yeah. training yeah I'm not saying you gotta do that every day nah but you have to every now and then test yourself a you lot of to. people don't test themselves bro nah they they're just used to doing machines yeah yeah you know that's it let me tell you um when i was in juco in new york shout out to monroe the very Best saying I ever heard came from my strength and conditioning coach at JUCO, karate. He he was a short Italian dude from Brooklyn. He was just oh, I already know he on some bull crap. He, he was nigga Italian. Wild up, bro. I mean, he was so wild up, bro. He just used to spaz. But our workouts, the re- he's the first person that instilled that working out for the mental. Because we did a lot of mental training. We did a lot of hang, see who could hang from the bar the longest, mm. wall sits, lunge holds. Mm. We would do those to finish our workouts. Just to, he wanted our mental to really get tested. But he would always say this. He said, I need y'all to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yes. And that shit stuck in my brain, bro, yeah. with everything I did, especially working out, which is why I like running. When it's summertime, I'm going to run in the hottest part of the day. Yes. I'm running my miles in the hottest part of the day. Cause That's I, how I train in the summer, too. Yeah, because I know that that uncomfort is separating me from the average. That's yeah. what's going to really take me to that next level. And, you know, shout out to karate. That was still the best you, thing you, I've You'll be able life. to survive a lot more when you're uncomfortable. Yeah. So, like, if you're an individual that, you know, may, may Allah protect this, that loses your parents mm-hmm. and your job and your daughter just, you know, comes home from the doctor and then she says, she, you know, they just diagnosed her with, you know, cancer and mm-hmm. stuff like that. All that happens at once. You are going to be mentally prepared in the individual who doesn't do your type of training. Why? Mm-hmm. Because you're more comfortable with the discomfort. Yeah. You're more comfortable with the discomfort. I'm not saying you're not going to be affected by it because yeah, you, you are. are. You are. But when the world is coming crashing down, like the world feel like it's coming and crashing down on me every single day th- yeah. these last couple of days. Yeah. But you're not going to know. Mm-hmm. You're not going to know. He wouldn't even know. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to talk about it, right? Mm-hmm. I'm going to just deal with it. But because I'm so comfortable with being uncomfortable, mm-hmm. it's easy. Prison made it easy. I'm gonna say mm-hmm. I'm a, a lot of it. I'm doing that. Prison made it easy, bro. <laughs> because you applied the work to do it, like you, like you yeah. said, people can go in and do the complete opposite. Get comfortable in prison. Oh yeah. Get the drugs to you know escape the reality yeah. and eat like shit and not work yeah. out. But you embrace that uncomfort, and that leads to people. 
you know, being depressed and not motivated because they True. need a motivating factor just to be productive. Yeah. And you may have it for a fraction of time, but when you don't have it, you feel like you don't know where to go. You're like, damn, what do I do? I don't have that motivating factor. Ah, shit, I'm depressed. I don't know. How. Yeah. Nah, when you don't have it, that's actually when you thrive. You're like, bet, motherfucker, that shit ain't going to stop me. Let's go. I'm going to take this shit head on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's, no, what, that's what leads to down. it. You nah, can't You nah. can't lay down. The minute you lay down, I'm telling you, mm -hmm. It's hard to get up. Yeah, yeah. So get comfortable being uncomfortable. Straight up and down. Um, my final question is this. Let's <clears throat> do it. Speaking of motivation, a lot of people say, oh, I can't, you know, I can't get in shape because I don't have the motivation or, oh, I can't get in shape because I don't have a gym membership. I can't afford it or whatever may have you. I was just speaking with my cousin and he's going down that slippery slope. I'm <laughs> like, bro, I know you. And when you work out, that's literally the best version of you. Get in the fucking gym. Yeah. I'll be on his ass. He'd be like, yeah, I know, bro. But... And those three letters, man, it can really hold you back more than anything. But he would say, yeah, I know, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm not at the, I don't have my membership anymore and I don't want to do it at home. I'm like, yo, you know how many videos on YouTube mm -hmm. and you know how beneficial a push up is? Like, bro, just get after it. But anyway, I digress. My thing, my question for you is this. Give me three workouts at home calisthenics that someone can do to get in shape. The three best workouts, I should say. Burpees, push-ups, and squats. Mm. Burpees, push-ups, and squats. Why those three? <clears throat> well, the burpee is both of them. Mm -hmm. Both of them, right, depending on how you do it. Yeah. It's a push-up and a squat. Yeah. Um, but burpees for conditioning and strength. Push-ups because they're just a full-body workout. Mm -hmm. And we're well, not a full-body workout, but they have a carryover strength to your pull endurance. So if you have a high amount of push strength, mm -hmm. right, nine times out of 10, when you get on that pull-up bar or do rows or deadlifts, you'll have a pretty effective pull-up, deadlift, or row. Mm -hmm. And then squats is because you're going to be walking for the rest of your life yeah. unless you become paralyzed. Yeah. So, and even if that comes about, right, mm -hmm. a lot of individuals that, you know, when they have accidents, doctors said they won't be able to walk again mm -hmm. if they had some type of lower body strength, mm -hmm. right? There's studies out there that can show potentially they will bounce back and they will walk again. Yeah. It may take them time, but the the the, the squats, body weight squats, hell yeah. Hell yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got so many different exercises out there. Just find what works best for you. Mm -hmm. Um. As far as like you're training your goals, and if you don't know what to do, find a trainer. Yeah, find a trainer. We're here in Laurel, Maryland, one Main Street, uh, Laurel, Maryland, right here by the uh, train station. Mm -hmm. um, and and then you, there's a trainer everywhere in every city. Just make is. sure you're going to somebody that's qualified. Yeah. Ask for their. I'm not talking about the 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 um the personal training licenses and qualifications and stuff like that. Go and run the Carfax. You know, when you get a car, yeah. you see the car well, history report, facts, yep. go and ask for referrals. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's what we do. That's what I would hope for my clients to do with me. Ask my clients about me. Mm -hmm. you know Testim what I'm testimonials. Ask the testimonials. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. And that will tell you everything you need to know. Yeah, straight up. Yeah. Man, and yeah, like you said, we're here in Laurel. Um, we both we both from Laurel. I, yeah, I was telling you before, like yeah. just driving down Route One, I'm like, damn, I miss Laurel, bro. And it's grown. Laurel's grown. Yeah, it, it's but. definitely grown. Like, I don't live out here no more, but I, yeah. I pretty much live out here because yeah. I'm always out here yeah. with the gym. Yeah. You yeah. know, other couple of little things, businesses that I do. Yeah. Um, before we do go, do mm -hmm. one of yo. You know I gotta have, have this for you. Mm -hmm. So one thing that we all specialize in here at Man Time Fitness is our testosterone, right? So we got a whole line of stuff right here for Day Day. Um, both we both of us weren't really feeling good the other day, right? Thanks. So this ain't really testosterone related, but it will somewhat help with that. This is mm -hmm. black seed oil. Um, I feel like I was about to die. I don't know if I caught something or what, but I took this, mm -hmm. right? And all you need is basically a tablespoon, maybe mm -hmm. two tablespoons. And I'm telling you, take it immediately when you start feeling symptoms of whatever. Drink it, two tablespoons, you'll be all right. I was sweating that whole night, but mm -hmm. I bounced back and I was able to get my workout in the next day. So this is available on our website, our Maka Stamina Water. This is our number one bestseller. But we have reason to believe mm -hmm. that 
after the maca stamina water, which is this right here, after the maca stamina water, we're going to have this. I don't have the labels yet, but this is our moringa juice. Moringa and green is with, good. Yeah, <laughs> it, green is good, especially yeah. in the winter time. Yeah. This is high in calcium, iron, um, magnesium, right? And it is also great because we have key lime juice with it. So with the key lime juice, it's going to help the absorption of the um, of the iron, which is very great for the winter time to help boost the immune system, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, this also, there's studies out this that can actually help with the length of your Johnson growing, right? Mm -hmm. um, I haven't been taking it long enough to, to, to you know, um, yeah. to, to stamp that, right? Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't have issues with that. Anyway, neither yeah. here it is. Neither here it is. This also helps with your skin, so it's going to yeah. help the skin glow and all of that. Uh -huh. So a Moringa juice is going to be available starting January 1st of the new year. Maca Stamina Water is available for purchase. Our uh, Inferno Ginger Shots, we've been selling this for a while now. This is four servings in one, right? And then our black seed oil, right? You Do can you get all of this on our website. Uh, ship? Yeah, we ship anywhere in the U.S., mm -hmm. uh, except Alaska and Hawaii. Okay. Um, now, if you're far away, a maca stand on the water will come frozen. Ginger Shots don't come frozen. Uh, this will come frozen. Uh, it will be shipped with dry ice. Just make sure you... Uh, uh, Excuse me. Dispose of it. Thaw it out. Oh, thaw, thaw it out. out. Thaw it out. But yeah, you can dispose of the dry ice. Yeah. Um, if you're like on the West Coast, we mm -hmm. will sell it. We will send it dry. So you will get the bottle, but you'll get the powder. Okay. You know what I'm saying? We also do have the powder form available too, starting January 1st of the Moringa powder. So if you're somebody that knows how to use and experiment with it, you put it in your smoothies, you can do that also. The maca will also be sent in powdered form. And of course, you know, we got our sea moss. Sea moss has always been on deck. We got yeah. that also um, in gel form. This is our mango uh, sea moss gel. We got it by the pound. We got it wholesale. If you're a supplier, if you're an establishment somewhere here in the DMV, reach out to us. We can get our products in your store. If you want to do business, we can do business. We can make it happen. And um, like I said, bro, we, we I damaged the community so much when I was home that I told myself fitness is going to have to be the way I give back. Mm. And the more and more I learn about testosterone, the importance of having a strong hormonal system, mm -hmm. right? Because that's something that's not talked about enough. Yeah. Not even just the testosterone. We're talking about cortisol. We're talking about oxytocin. We're talking about all these different hormones that have an effect on our performance, mm. right? The more I start to learn about it, I'm like, you know what? I need to start supplying products that can help with that. Yeah. Because if I can help you guys with... With this right here, right, with your hormonal system and your wellness, your gym experience, your gym journey, your fitness journey will be 10 times more easier. Because the reason why you're not motivated, I can almost guarantee for the men, your testosterone is low. Mm. Your testosterone is low. Mm. Which goes with the intake. Yeah. Um, like you said, man. This all you for you too, bro. Oh, this me? It's all for you, except this. <laughs> <laughs> it's all for you too. It's me, shit. Bet yeah, that, bet so. that. And, and the reason why I asked if you ship, that was, I mean, that was yeah, that was a free plug, but that was for me for real. Yeah. So we're gonna get you a bag for all that, especially with with this new job. Listen, I can I can get a few of these for to get a few of these shipped to me every other week now. You know what I mean? Um, bag right there. Well, let me turn these around. Listen, bro. Like you yeah. said. Uh, you you feel like it's your it's your calling to give back now after so much damage you did when you was out. It's your calling to give back, yeah. and let me tell you, that's exactly what you're doing, bro. Like, Appreciate it. You motivate me so much. Like you, I, I and the as far as people I know, you're the biggest motivating factor as far as people I know Thank I have you. in my life, bro. Thank you. Seriously, bro. like that's why this episode it. was so great. That's why I'm like, yo, we got it. We got to do this. Yeah, like, yeah. no question. Anytime you in Charlotte, I'm in Maryland. I mean, it's it's a no brainer. And um, you know, I really, you know, thank you. And uh, just want to let you know, you know, while you're here to give you the flowers, bro. It's it's it's. I really can't put into words how inspiring you are, bro. You know what I'm saying? And I really stay that. on that straight and narrow path. And even how happy I am from the last time we did this with the growth with your brand and whatnot, like. This this is big. I know next time we run this back in, you know, three, four years, whatever may have you, yeah. your gym is going to be huge. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I already know it. And then my platform, my brand as well is going to be bigger. And um, that's what it's about, man. Like minds. Like minds. Like
like minds grow together. Yeah, yeah, and I appreciate you, bro. Seriously. Likewise. Yes, sir. Likewise, um, man. Everyone tuning in, I damn sure can't do this with y'all, without y'all, so I appreciate y'all as well. Whether you are watching on YouTube or listening on your respective podcast platform, which if you are doing that, go ahead and tune into the YouTube, man. Get the visuals. It's always a vibe, but regardless, I truly thank y'all from the bottom of my heart. Uh, make sure that you go ahead and subscribe, like, comment, share this out, you know. Um, it's, it's stuff like this is meant to be put out in the universe and shared. You can't just keep this within. You know what I'm saying? Really so go ahead and share that out. And I thank y'all. But until then, ladies and gentlemen, make sure that y'all stay safe, stay sane, but most importantly, stay blessed and tap in with Man Time Fitness. Um, where can they, you know, find you, your brand, and your products and your services at? So A B U Asada, A S A D A one on Instagram. TikTok is Man Time Fitness. Um, I'm Man Time Fitness on all platforms. Put it like that. Mm -hmm. But my main account on Instagram is Abu Asada One, and Man Time Fitness on YouTube, TikTok, uh, Patreon, and Instagram. Mm -hmm. And you'll be able to find all the other accounts. Um, links that are attached to these accounts will have the access to the website and our online services. And I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put all his social media handles in the bio as well. That way you can, you know, go straight there. Whether you know, you're watching or listening, yeah, yeah, send me the link tree. Yeah, that's bigger one not. But until next time, y'all be easy, man. We gone. Peace. Salute.